Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. This episode will be a bit of a departure from my normal format, and I thought I'd take a moment to just talk to you candidly. The topic of loudness has been on my mind for a bit, and I know that a lot of people who are new to mixing audio struggle with getting their mixes to seem loud enough when compared to commercial productions. It seems almost like the way that the human ear works, we are pre-programmed to believe that louder is better. I realize that my opinion on the topic may not be a popular opinion, but I'd definitely like to discuss it a bit. I find it interesting how modern productions can be so loud and still try to preserve some semblance of dynamics. I'm not one to say that we shouldn't make any effort whatsoever to compete with the loudness levels of similar productions, because there's nothing more obnoxious than having levels jump drastically from one song to the next when you're listening to a playlist. But at the same time, I would say that we've gotten so obsessed with loudness that we've forgotten about the music and dynamics in general. I like to listen to a broad variety of music, from classical, music from the 30s and 40s, old school R&B, rock, rap, metal, and all points in between. Except for new country, I really can't get into new country. It's almost pop if we're honest. But wouldn't it be strange if orchestral classical music had the same loudness as a modern metal production? Can you imagine listening to Beethoven or Mozart with absolutely no dynamics? But that's essentially what we're doing to create loudness, is removing dynamics. If there's going to be any type of lesson in this video, I guess we can start here. For the new mixer who's wondering how to get their mix loud enough, I would say start by just turning up your monitors. If you have freshly tracked audio, it is near impossible to get that audio to commercial broadcast levels without processing. And by processing, I mean you have to understand what gets done to music in order to achieve those loudness levels. If you were to take a look at a waveform, you'll notice that there's peaks and valleys throughout that waveform. Those peaks represent the transient data, or the start of the sound. But what makes a sound perceivably louder is reducing the distance between the peaks and the valleys of that waveform. This can be accomplished through multiple stages of compression, clipping, limiting, and saturation until you get what's known as the fuzzy worm waveform. I'm not going to go into any great detail in this video as to how you can achieve louder mixes because that process can vary depending on the subject material, but I would like to show you an interesting tool in Reaper. Let's take a look. The project I've got open is the final mix of Headset by Kinda Mad. They'll be releasing the track in August of this year. Check the link in the description to keep up with them in social media. What we're looking at is the render dialog, and you can see that I'm rendering the master mix for the entire project. In the render dialog, I can choose the target directory, the file name, sample rate, file format, and various other options, but what I'd like to take a look at is the output after the render is completed. We can see in the lower portion the file name that was rendered, the maximum peak at minus 0.1, we didn't clip the master bus at all, and then we have a few other statistics towards the end showing LUFS or LUFS, I'm not quite sure how that's pronounced. But the acronym stands for Loudness Units Relative to Full Scale. By no means am I an expert on the topic, but to my understanding this is a measurement of how we perceive loudness. The LUFS scale is drastically different from what you would see in the meters in your mixer. As you may well know, we can have a song that clips on the master but still doesn't sound quite loud enough. That goes back to what we were discussing earlier about how the difference between the peaks and the valleys in your waveform is what creates loudness. If you can find the right way to improve the overall average of your waveforms, you'll have the loudness that you want. I do want to reiterate that by decreasing the distance between your peaks and valleys in your waveform, you are reducing dynamics, so you have to find the proper balance between dynamics and loudness. That said, I'd like to show you one more feature in Reaper that you may not be aware of. In this finished render dialog, click on Stats and Charts in the lower right corner, and let's click Open Render Statistics Charts in Web Browser. I'll bring this over to the other screen. And here we can see a statistics chart of the song that I just rendered. This gives us plenty of the same information that we saw in the render dialog, such as the song name, the length, peaks, clips, and the loop statistics. I can also choose to display project regions. I find this helpful because I can see statistics for each part of the song, assuming I've created regions. You may notice as I move my cursor over the waveform that I get detailed statistics about that exact point in the song. If I had any points in the song that were clipping, I would be able to clearly see it on the statistics and find the exact point in time where the clipping occurs. At that point, I could try to either address the problem at the bus level or go to that specific point in time and see if there may be some automation or something I can do to fix the problem. You'll notice there's different colored lines going across this chart. Our blue line is LUFS-M. M means momentary, and that's a measurement of the perceived loudness at that exact point in time. Dash S is short term, and as the name would suggest, that is a measurement of loudness over a short term. You should expect to see a bit of a difference in your short term loudness between, say, the verse and chorus. And we can see that in this song as indicated by this orange line as we chart it across the duration of the song. Arguably the most important measurement from a mastering perspective is LUFS-I. 
The I in this case stands for intermediate, and this is a measurement of the average loudness across the duration of the track. We can see that this particular track has an integrated loss value of about minus 8.5, and that competes well with this style of music. I know that certain platforms tend to turn down things that are too loud, so the argument quickly becomes why do we push for such extreme loudness levels if streaming media services will just turn it down? I don't exactly have the answer for that, but it's good to know that Reaper has tools built in to help you analyze the loudness of your productions. What are your thoughts on the loudness wars? Have we become so obsessed with making our music loud that we've forgotten about just making quality songs? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you like the content you've been seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me a Coffee, I like coffee, Patreon, or Super Thanks links below. Also, if you'd like your own Let's Talk About Reaper coffee cup, shirt, hat, stickers, and more, check the link in the description for the Let's Talk About Reaper store. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. Also, let me know if you'd like to see more open discussion type of videos like this that aren't necessarily tutorials. We'll see you next time. He likes coffee too.